Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is my Poloniex account that I've gotten set up. I ended up getting the rest of my cryptocurrencies off of Cripsy, which I believe will be bankrupt before the end of the year. And I got that out through Ethereum. Fortunately, I had purchased all Ethereum with about the 1.5 Bitcoins I had left on there. And in during that time frame, Ethereum had about a 5% rally. So I actually ended up getting more coins onto this exchange than I took off of the other exchange. So I'm pretty happy about that. I sent a few light coins up here and uh, a small amount of florin coins. So let me show you around. I haven't really done that much here. Um, I kind of like it. It's uh, a little slow sometimes, but um, it, and it's different, but it's kind of neat here. This page here, um, you can see that it shows me, you want to check these boxes, hide delisted coins and also hide zero balances. If you want to deposit a new coin on here, you can just uncheck the hide zero balances and then you can just go down to a coin. Uh, let's say you wanted to deposit some black coin, for example, you could just click this and generate an address and that's the address that you're going to send to with your black coin wallet right now i just have the the three on here so i'll go ahead and hide the zero balance coins and you can see those three so it's really easy if i want to throw some more coins on there you just have that address right there double click it there's my bitcoin address uh, my florin coin address and my litecoin address now you can see it also gives you uh, it, Gives you estimated dollar value, which is kind of neat. I think it, I think I was below 2,500 when I got them on here, so it's gone up a little bit. Then it gives you a total Bitcoin value. It also breaks down each coin uh, of how many you have on the exchange, um, how many are on orders, and then what your total value is. So you can see I've got about 4.77 Bitcoins on there. I've got about uh, 450,000 Florin coins on there, and about uh, uh, roughly 100. 70 light coins 160 light coins so that's that screen um, the other screen that I'm using right now I use the my open order screen and so to show you what I'm doing here this is what I do in flat markets something that where I don't really have an opinion one way or the other obviously I got rid of the ethereum the doge and anything that in my opinion is kind of a questionable coin uh, again, the Florin coin, that's just a personal opinion for me. The fact they're trading on three exchanges is good. You really don't want a coin that only trades on one exchange just in case it shuts down. But so this strategy here is, is close to a money maker. If you, I've bought and sold a few times by doing this. What you do is you, you come in and you put a, uh, a buy a bit below the market and you put a sell a bit above the market. You can see I've got 50,000 uh, Florin coin on each so you can see the difference another thing neat about this you can see the spread right there so if I simultaneously executed both of these positions uh, the one would be 0.175 Bitcoin the other would be 0.13 Bitcoin so you'd see I would lock in a profit of uh, 0.04 Bitcoins if I transacted both of those same thing with the uh, Litecoin I, I did a wider spread because Litecoin has been uh, trading fairly wide um, but again the, the numbers don't match here I've got 50 versus 25 so a tiny bit of profit you can lock in uh, especially if you put them in the overnight because what happens is sometimes on the markets you can have wild swings in the overnight and you can actually have both those taken out and then have it settle somewhere in the middle so just a kind of a way to slowly make a little bit of money I'm very happy about getting my coins off of Cripsy and uh, get them on to Poloniex. I haven't really worked with Bittrex. I think that's going to be my other one. Um, and once I've got a certain amount of Bitcoin and other coins on there, uh, I'll be in a position to do some arbitrage between the exchanges. I think there's already people doing that. But if you watch carefully, um, you can do a decent arbitrage thing. You're going to have to have a coin, of course, that is on both exchanges. So that's going to limit your uh, that's going to limit your abilities there. So you have to go to each exchange, find a coin that's on both exchange. Hopefully, find one that has a decent amount of volume, and then just 
watch the prices carefully and you can buy and sell simultaneously on both exchanges lock in an arbitrage profit if they have to happen to be mispriced against each other which does happen occasionally and then by doing that of course what you're doing is you're you're um, arbitraging the prices between the exchanges and you're actually causing them to sync up and that's just a natural function of the market so let's go to some stories here. The first story I want to take you to is uh, Investment Research Dynamics. And uh, this is, you know, a lot of people are getting frustrated now, especially with this. He documents the smackdown that happened after the Paris uh, false flag hoax attacks, I'll call them. I'm really not interested in spending a lot of more, a lot more time analyzing that because for me, the time that I spend watching mainstream media and the time that I spend analyzing the lies that they uh, propagate is time that I could much better spend doing something else, doing my own research. So uh, this is a, a reaction to the fact that the uh, precious metals markets, by all rights, if they're a safe haven, should have surged. And of course they did on the Asian Open and then they were absolutely crushed and destroyed on the uh, London and New York Open. So let's read this. Our fractional reserve financial system is just a gigantic Ponzi scheme. It can only survive as long as it expands, which is to say, as long as new debt is flushed through the system to finance old debt. But like all Ponzi schemes, the larger it grows, the more unstable it becomes. Eventually it collapses of its own weight, James Sinclair. The Western Central Bank, Bullion Bank, paper gold manipulators have become obvious. The reason is there is nothing stopping them from manipulating the market. Eventually, the physical demand from Asia will undermine their paper gold manipulation activities, but big buyers of physical who demand delivery have no reason to stop the price capping, obviously. James Turk discussed the various factors driving the manipulation in a King World News interview. I've created a graphic to illustrate the manipulation of the gold market as it occurred from Sunday into Monday. This rally in the precious metals was a result of investors moving out of currencies to a safe haven. It was an expected and natural reaction after the Paris attacks. Then came the unnatural, second and completely different precious metals market. Gold and silver ran into a solid brick wall when London opened. The difference between the way gold and silver traded in Asia and what happened in London was as stark as the difference between night and day. Are we to believe that in striking contrast to what we saw in Asia, there were no safe haven buyers in Europe? The reality is that the central planners were out in full force with their market interventions in London, selling persistently and using their algorithms to prevent gold and silver from climbing any higher. The price of gold jumped at the open of Globex trading Sunday evening. You can see that here. This would, let me uh, make this larger. This would be expected after a string of bad economic and earnings littered newswires Friday, late Friday, and then, of course, the event in Paris. But as you can see, after Asia was done feeding on the cheap gold provided to them from the fierce manipulation last week that drove the price of gold back under 1100 the typical Asia-closed London Open sell-off began. And that's right here where London opens. The massive manipulation has taken on shock and awe proportions. The fact that it has become so blatant and extreme reflects the growing sense of desperation by the elitists to keep the entire Western financial economic system from collapsing. If gold were allowed to trade free from the control imposed using Western paper derivatives, the price would shoot higher and send the warning to everyone that the system is on the verge of collapse. Several friends and colleagues recently have expressed a high degree of frustration and have asked me when I thought the suppression of gold would end. I point out to them, and I believe correctly so, the criminals looting our system have no choice but to use any means at their disposable in their attempt to keep gold from moving higher and to keep the stock market aloft. They have no choice. A falling price of gold and a rising stock market are the only cover stories they have left in their Kabbalistic effort to hide the absurd lies which belie the flood of propaganda about the economy, inflation, and unemployment. But at some point, 
their ability to keep the wheels on the fraud that is the United States is going to fail. Every Ponzi scheme in history eventually collapses. It's impossible to predict when this will occur. I do believe that there is a growing sense of awareness among the population that something is wrong. This is reflected in the fact that U.S. Mint Gold coin sales hit a 29-year high in the third quarter of this year. For those wallow, wallowing about in the cesspool of blind hope and have not prepared for what's coming, their lives will be shattered. So that's Dave Kranzler. Uh, I agree. It is a Ponzi scheme. They have to keep it going until, of course, uh, it collapses. And another Ponzi scheme here, we've covered this before, but uh, this is a good take from Simon Black, is Myra. Now, if you think about it, we already have Social Security. That's supposedly a government uh, retirement investment scheme. Note they're calling it entitlements now, but it's not an entitlement because it's something that you pay into. It's basically government theft of your money. That's what's happened because they put the money into the general fund. But they had that. Then they introduced the 401k and the IRA. So there's already two types of savings for retirement. Now they're introducing a third, this MIRA. So why would you introduce a third? Well, double down. If the existing ones are, are failing and underfunded, uh, why not suck out more people's money uh, before the whole thing collapses? So this is uh, Simon Black. In 1875, right around the time the United States overtook the UK as the largest economy in the world, the American Express Company established the very first private pension plan in the US. American Express had a simple goal, attract the best and brightest employees by giving them retirement security. At the time, this was a revolutionary idea. The concept of retirement was practically Martian. Back then, most people worked until they were no longer medically fit to do so. To voluntarily stop working and live out your golden years on perpetual vacation was a complete fantasy. But a century after American Express, thanks in large part to rising prosperity in the 20th century, retirement had become the norm. Private companies' pension plans covered over 40% of the American workforce, and millions of Americans were receiving Social Security by the 1970s. Then in 1974, the government passed the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, establishing individual retirement accounts, IRAs, to help people save for retirement in a tax advantageous way. Fast forwarding to 2015, we can see that none of this turned out quite like they'd expected. The state of retirement in America is now pretty abysmal. First and foremost, Social Security is desperately, woefully underfunded. Again, this is not Simon Black's conjecture. The Treasury Secretary and the Labor Secretary both sign an annual report stating that Social Security is close to trust fund depletion. In fact, one of Social Security's major trust funds is literally days away from running out of money. Federal retirement trust funds across the board, like the Railroad Retirement Fund, are also nearly exhausted. Meanwhile, private companies have followed the government's example, with many private pension funds similarly approaching insolvency. You see this frequently in the news as the cost of their pension funds push airlines and manufacturers into bankruptcy. They simply cannot pay their retirees. Not to worry, the federal government has an agency called the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation to bail out and guarantee insolvent private pensions. It's like the FDIC for private pension funds. There's just one problem. The PBGC itself needs a bailout. PBGC's latest report shows a net financial position of negative $62 billion, which is how much more they have in liabilities than assets. There's another word for that, insolvent. So there goes that idea. Last. There are individual retirement plans like IRAs, 401ks. Unfortunately, most Americans' individual retirement plans are woefully underfunded. According to the Employee Benefit Research Institute, the median IRA balance in the U.S. was just 32000 at the end of 2013, and the median amount saved by baby boomers amounts to just 13% of what their projected retirement needs are. Now, I personally believe that both the IRA and the 401k are going to be seized by the government and they probably will be mixed right here in with this Myra. Now, I don't think they'll get away with it until there's a stock market crash. 
Now, if you imagine, if we have a stock market crash and the majority of the funds in these IRAs and 401ks are stocks, and those crater and they go down an enormous amount, um, let's say we have something like a 75% bear market, and 75% of those funds are gone. Well, they happen to have this MIRA program because it's guaranteed it's government debt. Last week, the Obama administration officially rolled out its MIRA program. MIRA is a special form of IRA that helps Americans save for retirement by making it easy for you to loan your money to the federal government. Like a retirement account, the idea is to save a little bit every month or every year to be set aside in a tax advantageous way for retirement. The big catch here is that for MIRA accounts, there's only one investment, U.S. government bonds. At present, U.S. government bonds fail to pay interest rates that meet the government's officially published rate of inflation. So with these MIRA accounts, when adjusted for inflation, you're guaranteed to lose money. The Obama administration, of course, entirely dismisses this criticism, saying that these MIRA accounts are for people who aren't saving and who have a fear of losing their principal. Well, why don't they just put it in a coffee can, bury it in the yard. It's pretty appealing when you think about it. Private pensions are near insolvency and the government's guarantee, government's guarantee agency is insolvent. Public pensions and retirement funds are also nearing insolvency and individual retirement funds are completely undercapitalized. This will become an epic retirement funding crisis. Yet the government's solution is to encourage Americans who are at risk of losing their retirement to loan their money to the greatest debtor that has ever existed in the history of the world at interest rates that don't even keep pace with inflation. The government claims that MIRAs are guaranteed, but the only thing guaranteed is that you'll lose money, whether through inflation, default, or confiscation. The lesson here is clear. Don't rely on the government for your retirement. You are a far more reliable manager of your own money. And then he gives the typical Simon Black pitch to get your money offshore, and I cannot disagree with him. Now, if you can't get your money offshore, I'm putting my money in cryptocurrencies and, of course, gold and silver. Um, for me, gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies, as far as uh, something that you can do onshore, is really the only thing you can do. Uh, both the retirement savings accounts, whether they're IRAs, 401ks, MIRAs, uh, public pensions, private pensions, I think they're all going to collapse probably all at the same time and the government's going to probably just fold them all into one thing. You don't want to have any of your money in that. And of course, gold and silver, um, they are probably going to explode to the upside when that happens. Now, it might be uh, in a new currency, it might be in the existing currency. Um, we just don't know, but we do know that what they currently have for us is a Ponzi scheme. And uh, like Dave Kranzler said, eventually Ponzi schemes collapse. And we'll talk to you next time.